right, well, guess what? We are moving yellow peas. We're all in Chester. It worked out very well for timing because if we had to do this during seeding, spring, and all that craziness, and we have this on top, it would have been very challenging to try to get everything taken care of. So this is a fantastic time. We're done seeding. Spring is basically wrapped up. We've got a little time right now, so we're trucking peas to Chester. 6,000 bushels, and I'm driving the 9370. I love this truck. It just speaks, well, 80s. Just got done weighing myself, and uh, yes, I'm still fat, but I do have a lot of peas in the back, so that probably holds a little bit of the fatness, not all me. We are unloading into the train cars right now, which is awesome because when I get this unload, then I get to weigh myself again, find out I'm less fat, and I hope that's a surprise to you guys. Head back to the home place and dig up some more peas out of the building and start the whole fatness again. Hold up on the scale again. I hope it's gonna be good news. I'll tell you right now, there was a way to lose that much fat in that short amount of time, I'm all for it because I lost like, oh, just thousands of pounds. Okay, let's get back to the farm, get this thing loaded. I won't be able to make another load today. I'll have to do it tomorrow because uh, I'm running out of time to get back here. But anyways, let's get back on the road. Finally back from a wannabe work vacation and we're gonna move some more peas out of this building. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab the loader, load the truck up. Leg arms already got a load taken off down the road in the International, get a few more of these done. Couple steps closer to having some cold storage back. Can't wait. Let's get moving some peas. Let's get this going and then move on to the next thing because there's some cool things coming. You guys just wait. She's all topped off. We hit the road, get on Highway 2. Driving from Shelby to Chester, about 35 miles, something like that. 40 some minute drive, not too bad. I'll hug around 60 to 65 miles an hour. Wind is definitely helping me on the way there. It's blowing like 30 plus miles an hour, so good tailwind. Not complaining about that, except for when I'm coming against it. Can't wait to get these peas done. It's gonna be so nice, so nice. We're down to like the last 10,000 in that building. We get about 6,000 of it now, and then hopefully in a week or two, we'll get the rest of it out there when they need it. And then we got a pretty good chance. We got the rest of the peas that are in the farm, which yes, we have more. Our market it as well. So, things are looking good. I'm excited. Let's go trucking. Wow, I just got back. Whew, that is a nasty headwind. I feel it pulls harder going into the wind than it does with a full load going with the wind. Anyways, leg arm's got the loader going. He's gonna load me up. He's got his truck loaded up over here. We'll get a couple more loads in tomorrow. I'll be done with that. Crop is not far from being sprayed. It's coming quick. Got a little bit of chem file left to do. So we'll keep messing with that, but things are happening. It's getting smaller. We figure under 10,000 left back there. We're gonna haul another four in tomorrow. Then when they want the rest of that, we'll get it out of here and hopefully fill this thing up with iron. No more organic stuff. Iron, lots of iron. Well, good morning, good morning. It's about that time for me to jump in the truck and make a couple loads to Chester. And hopefully we'll finish up that contract today if there's no problems. And I also thought it was pretty fitting to wear this shirt that my lovely wife designed of that truck right there. I figured I'd better match the truck instead of the truck matching me. But let's get on the road, let's start trucking and it's about that time, isn't it? 9370 time, that's what it is. Let's do this. Just finished giving them the rest of my peas out of the truck. I gotta swing around and weigh myself again. Then I'll find out how much I actually gave them. All right, we're getting up to this intersection up here. Look both ways before crossing the street. Otherwise the street will cross me. And still waiting. There we go. Okay. So 
sweet. Now she just has to figure out how much it is, print the ticket, give it to me, and I'm on my way. There we go. All right, I am going to slowly get out of here. This place was not designed for semis. Back in the day, they used to have tandem trucks or single axle trucks, which maybe had 200 to 300 bushel grain box. The small truck, when they built these facilities, they didn't really factor in having massive trailers going through and turning around. So when you had a small confined area, these little trucks were easy to just kind of pull in and pull out, and that, was, that wasn't hard at all. Times have changed, and you've got 40, 50, you know, almost 60 foot trailers, and then you got these Super Bs, which have a trailer, and then there's like a pup on the back. You know, you start adding all this length, and these semis that don't turn very sharp, well, it's a little bit more confined areas, but it's still doable. You just have to be very careful and make sure you don't scrape your trailer going out. Let's take off and head back to Shelby. Done seeding for a few days and uh, waiting for the crop getting ready to spray. So it's a great time to work what we call the shelter belt. These are the grove of trees that you find out in the prairie that farmers plant around their farmstead for a number of reasons. One's to catch the snow so it doesn't blow in the farmstead as much. Other is for birds and livestock. And then it's also just to be able to see some trees out here in the treeless prairie. But what happens is when you first do the shelter belts, we figure, well, and that's pretty far spacing for the trees to be able to work in between them. Well, as the trees have gotten bigger and these trees are probably somewhere around over 40 some years old, probably like that, this shelter belt, they do become overgrown across, which makes it real hard to run the tractor through. So I've got this great side-by-side -side with a dump box, the Can-Am. Uh, it's just fun to do now, but I have a Sawzall and right now I'm cutting some of these so that he'll be able to get the tractor through here without scratching the paint, tearing up lights and stuff like that. So as you can see, I've got a start on it. I've got a few of them uh, cut. He's in the process of running through. He might come through this line. There's about five different uh, lanes to go through. So it's a little bit different than where we were this winter at the World Expo and looking at the Central Valley and their orchards. This is a very common thing for them. They got to keep the trees trimmed so that they can do the management and harvesting of the different kind of fruit trees. Well, these quite aren't fruit trees and we're not really harvesting. This is not Central Valley. It's our small little scale of uh, having to trim an orchard. Let's go ahead and get this done. Just got back in the yard. I gotta fire up that big front end loader and start scooping out of this pile, fill the truck, make another load because we're getting this close to finishing that contract. It's actually a pretty fast contract. It doesn't take us that long. That's one more thing to check off the list because we got multiple things to get done. All right, let's go get this big front end loader started. Start scooping and filling the truck because that Demco trailer right there, it's kind of wanting something inside and you know, it's uh, getting kind of lonely and it wants to be useful and I think I can make its wish come true. All right, let's do this. Things on the farm overall are going pretty good. Getting a lot done. Uh, the crops are growing strong. The wheat is definitely out of the ground. Got a couple inches to it. The yellow peas, they're growing fast. They're just about the stage where I can start spraying them. Real close, haven't quite gotten there yet. I was gonna do some of that today, but I think I'm gonna give them the weekend to finish growing a little more before I spray them, just to give them a little bit more of a chance to handle the chemicals I can put on them to take care of the grasses. And then the chickpeas are just starting to poke out of the ground. So I'll do a crop tour here soon and uh, do a good big scout, see the stages and everything, make sure everything's doing okay. We're just kind of getting set up for those big grain bins that are gonna be put up here soon. Just kind of waiting on that for the builders to come. Those two hoppers that we just bought, those are gonna get moved around eventually when we get that set up. I got stuff to do at the lake house. There's a lot of farm projects still that's gotta be done. So we're busy, we're busy. It's like you're just entering month of June. I know it's just gonna disappear like that. And we'll be harvesting and then it'll be winter again. The old days of goofing off all summer, it's okay. I'll retire someday and 
do it then. Well, for being a beautiful day like today, one thing that needs done is I need to plow our windbreak. If you guys don't know what a windbreak is, when you live in country like this, where the wind blows a lot, you actually plant hedgerows of what we call carriganas. Sometimes they use other plants like we've done as much as uh, choke cherry bushes. They work great and what they do is they help reduce the amount of wind as it comes across your farmyard. That way you don't just blow to the east because it always blows from the west to the east. But to keep those hedgerows growing because we're such a dry environment here that hardly trees don't hardly grow. Obviously you know that by looking around. Bushes have a hard time growing. So we plow between the rows to stop the grass and the weeds from growing from sucking up all the moisture that the trees and the bushes need. But that means you got to maintenance every now and then. So we go and hook up a little plow to a tractor and uh, rip up and down it. It's getting to be overgrown. So some of the lanes down the wind rows are getting a little bit tight. But let's go look at the plow, make sure it's good to go. I might need some air to fill the tires up. If it looks good, I'll go grab the tractor, probably the 7140 Magnum, hook onto it, and we'll rip some rows get it done and now we haven't done it again probably for another month or so take the defender by the way can-am got a good machine here like this thing a lot so far haven't had any issues with them they're just really nice okay maybe one little issue the brakes squeak a little bit but we're getting that fixed other than that good machines She's an oldie, but it keeps doing what we need it to do. Looks good so far. I think I'll just grab the tractor. Let's hook onto that. Check, see if I need to put any shovels on it. We use duck foot shovels, or we call them plows, but sweeps, a sweep, that's another term for it. And it works pretty good at turning the soil over, keeping stuff from growing that you don't want growing. All right, magnum time. This tractor's a little overkill for that, but it'll work fine. It's just gonna get scraped up. Those branches are overhanging pretty good in that windbreak. It'll work, that's fine. Okay, we're scooting. That's some old iron back there. But for this kind of thing, it's great. And this tractor, like I said, a little overkill for that. But you know what? It works. So these are the caraganas I was talking about. This is our wind break, help break up the wind. They've grown a lot over the years. When you first plant these things, you think you got enough space between them, but after 30, 40 years, it's, it eventually overgrows itself. So as you see when I get in there, it's gonna be a little tight, but I'm just gonna plow through it, plow these rows out. And you know what? I might break a few branches. I might scratch some already faded paint, but this tractor is gonna get a makeover someday anyway, so it'll be okay. Oh, that was good. Got that all plowed up. Of course, there's a lot of areas that are previous windbreak, trees, plants, whatever that was put there, died due to drought, lack of rain. And no, we don't have a way to put irrigation lines in and water all these things because we have to have cisterns on the farm and the amount of water that would take. But I do have an idea. I think I'm gonna go dig up a bunch of small caraganas. That's what these are. At some other locations on the farm, bring them over here, dig some holes. I'm gonna plant some new caraganas in the dead spots and make these rows more complete, put some tires around them so no one runs over them with this thing again in the future. And then maybe try to remember to water them along during the summer with the water truck if I can. And hopefully get some new growth so that way this break will be filled in like this. Just more work. I like work. Well, I've got my co-pilot here. Bunch of branches cut off so that it's easier to get through the shelter belt the next time. But now we got to go down to where our landfill is and where we've been dumping a lot of the branches and all kinds of things sometime. It'll be a big bonfire, but anyway, let's go take this Defender Can-Am for a ride. And you never know, I might let him drive. What do you think, Kobe? You ready? You, oh, really? I know, yes. All right, here we go. Uh, wait, I'm gonna go over here, secure the side net. Okay, okay, here we go. Thanks, hey, Kobe. Is that fun? Yeah, there we go, yeah, we're having fun. All right, let's go. Okay, I'm gonna loosen the strap and then this is the first time I've used the Can-Am dump bed as far as letting it uh, do its own job instead of us trying to, so.
One thing I forgot to do, I won't forget the next time, is let the end gate down before I pile the branches on. Don't tell the boys. They'll laugh at me. They're saying, don't you know that? I thought you knew that, Dad. Just keep it between you and me. I appreciate that. What do you know? It's still springtime. All right, let's go find Kobe. Oh, there he is, right behind me. He's out here checking for cottail rabbits. Never can catch one, but it's always fun to see them and run them into a brush pile, and they have lots of places to hide here. Well, Kobe, huh? have you uh, done your hunting for the day? I don't think he's done yet. I think he's ready to find some more. I think we're ready to roll. What do you think, Kobe? Onward? All right, I think so. I made a big boo-boo. You guys wanna come see it? We gotta take this to fix it. I'll show you. Let's go. Let me talk to you guys a little bit about mistakes. They can be very costly. Sometimes they can be not very costly. This one, this one could be a couple thousand dollar mistake. In the grand scheme, I guess that's not like gonna break the bank or anything, but it's just a bummer. So what's happening is I'm standing in what I thought was a wheat field, but no, it's actually a chickpea field. When I was spraying the pre-emergent spray, which is sulfentrazone and glyphosate. I put both those down. Glyphosate to take care of the stuff that's currently growing, which should have been this stuff. I'll get to that in a second. And it takes care of new stuff that's growing without hurting the chickpeas that come through. So that way you've got a clean slate, nothing growing. Your chickpeas can come out of the ground, get a head start of all the other weeds that are gonna grow eventually, and hopefully choke them out and you'll have a good crop. It's clean, not having any issues. What happened was when I was spraying, this didn't get rolled. And even though I knew this field was gonna be chickpeas, I wasn't seeding, I was spraying the whole time. When I did my ramp, I sprayed all the fields that I saw were rolled, assuming that, okay, we had the land roller on the ground, it already rolled it, that's ready to be sprayed. Well, I drove by this one and I saw there's furrows in it, it's not rolled, so I'm like, oh, that's gotta be a wheat field. There's some stuff growing in there, but I must spray it, I think I'm fine. Well, I didn't go around and look at the crop soon enough, just got to here. These weeds are not dying. There's grass, there's weeds, tansy musters, koshas, Russian thistles, buckwheat, there's all kinds of stuff growing in here. So, <laughs> The problem is, this is where I'm getting to, this is gonna be a wreck. There is enough growing in this that if we let this continue, it's gonna be one giant mat of weeds. It'll choke out the chickpeas that are in here trying to grow. We have to take care of these weeds. Problem is, the chickpeas are growing and they are poking out of the ground. There's one right here, little guy. So if I spray this, I am going to kill most of the chickpeas, but I am gonna kill the weeds. So the dilemma is, because there's nothing with, with spray, you have to kill it before you plant the chickpeas. There's nothing that you can spray afterwards, really, that won't kill the chickpeas, but that'll kill the weeds. They're too close to family. So the dilemma is, do we leave it and let the weeds grow with the chickpeas and then see what we have at the end of the year? Well, I know what we're gonna have. We're gonna have a mat of billions of seeds of weeds that we've just grown with some chickpea plants in there and then we're gonna have to desiccate it. In other words, we're gonna have to spray it to kill everything down so we can harvest it later in the year and probably not make a whole lot of yield off the chickpeas. Or I spray it now with some glyphosate. We lose some chickpeas in the process. They're just starting to poke out of the ground. So I'll kill some of them, but I'll kill the weeds and then we'll reevaluate and see, okay, how much is growing in like two weeks when all the weeds die. If there's still a stand of chickpeas, because there are some that are under the ground, we leave it, we harvest that, and we just take our loss. So either we lose everything and we just spray it all out and just don't even use this field, or we take a little loss, or we gamble with a lot of weeds and possibly some yield. It's a tricky situation because there's a lot on the line. There's a lot of money in chemical, there's a lot of money in seed that's in the ground already. It's getting late in the season, our drills are already put away, so we're not gonna reseed this. Otherwise, we would have just sprayed it out and reseeded wheat to it. My mistake, combination of things that led to this, I should have known that this was a chickpea field. These kind of things seem to happen. And this field here in particular, I can't tell you how many years, year after year, I miss this thing when I'm spraying. It's a little 40 acre field, which is the saving thing in this. It's not thousands of acres, it's 40 acres. It's a lot of acres still, but it's not the end of the world. But <laughs> I've missed this spot. It's the way I spray around and I come by through and I just, I don't know. So I'm gonna spray it with big root. Let's take care of it. Get this done, and then we'll find out soon if uh, the gamble worked. If we didn't kill all the chickpeas, or if we hope to kill less than 20% of them, and the rest grow through, and we still have a crop. I didn't want to make the mistake on chickpeas. Wheat, yeah, that's fine. It's not as much, but chickpeas, they're expensive. Oh well, this is all we can do. We'll see what happens. 
Time will tell, but uh, a little experiment, costly experiment. I think there'll be something that'll make it though. We'll find out. At least this is done. I should be done spraying this kind of stuff, but I got a lot more spraying to do. It's okay. Cool things are happening. I was out spraying, helping Nick finish up some chem fallow. I see another one of these little guys. Oh, isn't he just cute? Bye! I hope he has a lovely day. Kind of cool, actually. Huh, that makes number three. The most I've ever seen of these little critters crawling around. All right, let's get back to the spraying. That's it. I am done. First camp foul of the year. Oh, that felt good. Only problem is I'm not done at the field. So am I done? Kind of. Leg arms. He's up there in the Apache. If you can see him on the hill taking pictures of his sprayer. I guess he thinks the lighting's really cool right now and wants to take uh, sweet pictures of it. I do it too, so I, I can't really complain. But he's got more chemical than I did. So uh, he's gonna come over and finish the rest of those like 30 acres that I didn't get done because Big Brew ran out. I get to run home. Done, done, done. And then in like four days, I gotta start spraying yellow peas. But we got something cool for that, so it'll, it'll be a good time. Let's go tell Leg Arms what he needs to do. How much do you have left? This is like 20 gallons left. Oh, that's not gonna be enough. No, I'm just about up. Okay, well. Let's run over Fluffy, little cute porcupine about this big. Another one over here? Yeah, I was oh, grabbing him. I didn't see awesome it. Toss up in the air, you know, petting them a little bit. Look at them. There's a bunch of mule deer over there. Oh, wow. Uh, Okay, well, I don't have, I, yeah, we got probably 25 acres left. I should have put a little bit more in, but yeah, you don't have enough. All right, well, we'll have to make a trip over here again. I mean, you got 20 gallons, you got enough for four acres. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll have to bring more over here. That's too bad. This is the farthest side of the farm. Bummer. We were really hoping that it'd come out okay, but it's kind of hard to measure how many acres you have left. It's not that easy to think. So the spray tender already went back to the farm because we've never made the anymore, but I should have put a little bit more in here. The reason we didn't want to overfill is because when we're out of chem follow acres, what do we do with the rest of the chem that's mixed up in the tank? Say you've got 150, 200 gallons in there. That's a lot of spray. You just go put it somewhere. I mean, I guess you can put it in a sh couple shuttles and eventually pump it back in, but it's just a hassle. It's much easier if you come out really close to the end, but this time we undershot it, so that's okay. It's just the joys of farming. It's just one of the things you do. I'll come back here with a little bit of a tank mix and uh, finish out what's left. Let's run home. Just uh, jumped in the this water truck to haul a little more water to the sprayer trailer. Kobe's ready. To run again. Okay. All right, 220 gallons in there. That's enough to do about 40 acres. So that should do it. I just took 10 minutes to drive home. Now I'm gonna take 10, 15 minutes to drive back to the field and then spray and then 10, 15 minutes back to the farmyard. But the brute goes fast enough that it's quicker to drive the brute home, fill it up and drive it back to the field than it is to take the whole truck out there. Cause at 50 miles an hour, that's about as fast as the truck would go. Might as well take the brute back. So let's go. Dalio! Guess what? We did not finish yesterday, which means we have two more loads to finish out this little contract that we have going on here. Well, I got one load, the other one will be arriving, but they had a complication. The little pusher car that runs the train cars back and forth, somebody was using it and they got it stuck. So it's gonna be a little bit for them to get it unstuck and bring it over here. When they say stuck, I'm guessing it was not on the train tracks. Yeah. Let's step out for a little bit. I'll show you a little bit of what they got going on here. So they have a Brant, drive over deck just like ours, which is a conveyor running into this wonderful, beautiful conveyor right here. It's a big old sucker. It's like 80 some feet, I think, into the train cars. So they open the hatches on the train cars. Then they unload from the truck into the conveyor, go into the train cars, and then they have that little pusher car, which actually pushes the train cars back and forth. Once they feel like these are satisfied with however many bushels they want in it, whenever the train is able to, they'll hook onto another train and they get shipped away from who knows where. It could be uh, China, it could be Japan, it could be wherever else they want to put it. But that's that's a mystery and I would love to find out where the product that us farmers make, where it actually ends up to. Hopefully it's into your uh, cereal and you know, granola bars and all that kind of fun stuff. It's pretty, pretty awesome. So we're just gonna sit here for a little bit, wait until uh, they get an opportunity to bring the pusher over and get this finished up. They told me that they could not get the pusher car out of the mud. Those things are heavy and they need a bigger tractor. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna use their little tractor to try to push these cars back and forth and see how that goes. But they're unloading me a little bit, so that's good. Making progress. 
slowly. Things happen. What can you do? Their day has probably been very entertaining and eventful today, and I'm not going to make it more stressful by being impatient. We'll get it done when we get it done. That's all that matters. There we go. This truck's empty, and I guess I'm going to clean it out, make sure no peas or anything is left in the trailer. And we got a little bit of winter wheat to haul. Ah, about 3,000 bushels, give or take, whatever's left in the bin. Let's move on to the next thing. All right, guys, what's happening is kind of mowed the yard once before, but didn't break out the mutant mower. Many of you have seen this before, some haven't. This is a multi-branded mower. It's especially uh, designed for this farm. Has a number of interesting components in it. Uh, you can see a lot of multi-colored items that are on there from previous pieces of equipment. The name they gave it, Mutant Mower, is awesome. So anyway, I'm going to get this thing fired up. I got it serviced, then I'm going to go and I'm going to do a little bit of mowing. So let's go get it cut. good outside so I didn't record anything of us putting wheat in the back of the truck of the grain back but you guys have seen that before so anyways I got winter wheat in the back heading down to the elevator they're filling up with uh, winter wheat over at the bins we've got three loads to take out of that bin roughly we're gonna get that done today and then we'll be done with that another thing to check off list Bin's empty, truck's got some in it, and I'm gonna take off with the blue truck now. Blue Peterbilt, get this wrapped up so I can go spend some time with my family. They've been very patient with me. I can't wait to get back to my family right now. 